What's going on, Westwood students online? So glad that you have chosen to tune in with us tonight. Hey, if you are a middle school student, you're in the wrong place right now. We wish you could hang out with us, but you got your own friends to go and hang out with. So why don't you click um, our, our account information down below our name, and it will take you to our profile page here on YouTube, and you'll actually see the middle school video that literally just got done rolling, just got done premiering. Your small groups are also meeting right now, and your small group leader, I'm sure, is missing you. You. So why don't you go tune in with them and in a couple of years you'll be able to hang out with us in person, let's hope. Um, but uh, it's going to be a special evening, high school students. Our goal for all of this is that we would help you fall deeper in love with Jesus during quarantine. And so if you tune in, if you dig deep, if you pay attention, um, you will fall deeper in love with Jesus because that is what this is all about. You're going to notice that things look a little bit different tonight. We're changing up the video a little bit to make it more about what's most important, which is falling deeper in love with Jesus. Now, we also want these videos to be what you need in your life right now. I am fully aware and Caroline is fully aware that you have been sitting in front of a screen all day today and we don't just want to provide a video for you to watch. We want to provide something for you to really consume and, and something that will energize you and help you grow. And so whatever we can do to help that, please let us know. We don't just want to be another screen that you have to stare at, but we want to be something that you get to do and want to do. So please, like I said, for like the third time now, let us know. You can comment in the chat box um, attached to this video, or you can email me personally. You'll see at the end of the video, my email is there. Uh, please do so. We want these videos to look how you want them to look so that you can fall deeper in love with Jesus. Now, today we are going to be led in worship right away by our friend Evelyn and then Caroline is going to start our new series. Well, it's still the same series, Behind the Curtain, but now we're going through the book of Daniel. So she's going to kick it off and then you'll see Alan and Caroline at the end of the video. So you can stay tuned if you want to watch the vlog, see what shenanigans Alan is up to. Um, I personally was really impressed with his hairstyle last week. I didn't think he could pull it off because he obviously shaved it all off since the first couple of weeks, but he's really looking pretty, pretty good right now for, I mean, the, the ghostly person that he is. But some people are saying they can't see Alan. Really confuses me because I've seen him. I've actually met him before. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. End of the video. You'll see him there. But for now, let's worship. So posture your hearts in a place of worship as we sing these songs over you or as you join with us in these songs. Take it away, Evelyn. Well, hey, Westwood students, it's Evelyn here, and I just wanted to lead you in a song tonight. The song's called The Blessing, and it's a pretty popular song right now. Um, it just talks about how the Lord sees us in this chaos. He sees us in this craziness, and he wants to return all of that with peace. So I encourage you to just let the song wash over you tonight. If you don't know it, I just encourage you to let those lyrics uh, sink into you. And if you know it, sing along with me.
children, their children, their children, his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, their children. Let's lift that up. May his favor be upon you in a thousand generations, in your family, in your children. we know that you are with us and you know that you are for us and even though this is crazy and this is something we're never going to forget during this time Lord we trust that you are for us we trust that you're going to give us peace in return for our chaos and for our confusion that you're going to fill us with peace you're going to fill us with joy when we're feeling lonely or confused or just like we don't have any friends left because we haven't seen them in, in months but Lord, I pray that we would know that you're with us. I pray that we would be reminded that there is an end to this. And Lord, that we would just stay joyful in this time and we would be filled with your goodness daily. Lord, we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Hi, HSM friends. So beautiful to see your faces tonight. I'm really happy that you guys made it. Um, my name is Caroline Blomberg and I am the high school and college ministry intern at Westwood. And I'm going to be teaching you some things tonight. Uh, this is gonna be our first week of the second part of the Behind the Curtain series, uh, which Matt started uh, over the last three weeks, I think, going through Romans 8. Um, this week we are starting the part two and we're going to be going through the book of Daniel. So get your handy dandy Bibles out. This is my Bible. Shout out Maddie Uglum. Bold, the brand. Love you. Um, we're going to be going through the first chapter of the book of Daniel and I'm pretty pumped. Basically what tonight's going to look like is I'm going to take you guys through how I study scripture in my uh, personal time with the Lord, as well as just how I, I don't know, lead Bible studies and all that good stuff. Um, I've kind of been learning more and more over the last 
year or two, like how I need to study scripture for my personal self to get as much out of these pages as possible. Um, and so your way of doing it might look different, but I'm going to take you through what I do. Sounds good. You guys look beautiful tonight. If you're with someone, give them a high five. If you're with yourself, give yourself a high five. <laughs> okay, let's do this thing. Um, and I've never actually read through the book of Daniel, so it was actually really fun for me to explore the new book. Um, and the cool thing about scripture is that you guys could read this scripture, this chapter, and get something totally different than I got. Um, but I'm going to take you through what the Lord taught me and what I felt like he just kept pointing out to me, pointing out to me, pointing out to me. Um, and so what I usually do when I start reading a new book is I go to YouTube, actually. I'm very hip, just like you guys. I go to YouTube and I watch something called The Bible Project. It's two dudes who go through books of the Bible, different concepts in the Bible, and they make really, really awesome videos to help you understand it. So I went to the Bible Project, I watched the Daniel episode, and it just gave me a really good overview about what the whole book is about. And then I went to my Bible. I have a study Bible. I'm ESV reader because I like the ESV version. So in my study Bible, I went in the introduction and I read about the date, the author, um, the theme, the purpose, the background, the context I've found for myself, and I hope you guys find too, that these words will hold so much more meaning once you know who they were written to, why were why they were written to them, and, and just the overall context of the environment it was written. It's kind of similar to like if you were trying to give advice to your friend about their boyfriend or someone that they're talking to, It'd be really hard to just jump into it without any knowledge about the past experiences with the man or about like how he's treated her in the past or how their relationship has looked up until this point. You don't just go into it being like, I think you should stay together forever and you're going to get married without knowing anything. You need to ask, okay, what's he been like? How does he treat you? What are his morals? Right? So it's kind of similar to scripture. Once you know the context, it means a lot more. Um, so, that's my background, that's what I do before I start actually reading the text. Um, and I'm going to be reading, so we're in Daniel, I'm going to read Daniel 1, 3 through 16. 3 through 16. So it's going to be a little bit of a lot, but you got to get the whole story. I mean, it's just a story about Daniel and his friends. So, starting in verse 3. Then the king commanded Ash, Ashpenaz, his chief eunuch, to bring some of the people of Israel, both of the royal family and of the nobility, youths without blemish, of good appearance, and skillful in all wisdom, endowed with knowledge and understanding, learning and competent, to stand in the king's palace, and to teach them the literature and language of the Chaldeans. The king assigned them a daily portion of the food that the, that the king ate, and of the wine that he drank. They were to be educated for three years, and at the end of that time they were to stand before the king. Among these were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah of the tribe of Judah. And the chief of the eunuchs gave them new names. Daniel he called Belshazzar, Hananiah he called Shadrach, Mishael he called Meshach, and Azariah he called Abednego. But Daniel resolved that he would not defile himself with the king's food or with the wine that he drank. Therefore, he asked the chief of the eunuchs to allow him to not defile, defile himself. And God gave Daniel favor and compassion in the sight of the chief who, of the eunuchs. And the chief of the eunuchs said to Daniel, I fear my lord the king who assigned your food and your drink. For why, sh why should he see that you were in worse condition than the youths who are your own age? So you would endanger my head with the king. Then Daniel said to the steward, whom the chief of the eunuchs had assigned over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, test your servants for ten days. Let us be given vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then let our appearance and the appearance of the youths who eat the king's food be observed by you, and deal with your servants according to what you see. So he listened to them in this matter and tested them for ten days. 
At the end of the 10 days, it was seen that they were in better appearance and fatter in flesh than all the youths who ate the king's food. So the stewards took away their food and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables. It's so good. Gotta love those vegetables. Okay, so that was a lot of scripture. I know that. But you gotta read the whole story to understand the whole story, right? Um, I'm gonna pray really quick and then we're gonna jump in to what I got for you guys. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the day. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for um, your spirit leading us in and through us. Um, God, I pray that you would speak through me, speak through these pages, and uh, more than anything, God, help us to understand um, who you are, your character, and, and what your love looks like in our everyday life and what that means for us. God, we love you and help us to understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's get it. So, some stuff that in the context and in the background reading that I did, that really stood out to me. So we didn't read the first little chunk of the chapter because it would have been even more stuff for us to read. But some stuff that stood out to me was um, that the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, um, his goal was to assimilate these four guys, ex assimilate these exiles um, into the Babylonian culture. So what maybe you didn't hear or read in the first little um, three verses is that um, King Nebuchadnezzar came into this kingdom and uh, ransacked it. He overthrew the king, and then he took Daniel and his three friends as um, exiles, as, as to be his servants. So um, that's a little bit of context. And his goal um, in the first little part, as you can see, his goal was to take them who are Jewish and turn them into Babylonians make them assimilate into Babylonian culture um, and he did this by um, as you can read in verse 4 by teaching them the literature and the language of the Babylonians by um, taking away their food and making them eat the basically scraps from the king's table and the wine from the king's table um, so as to make them grateful and endowed to the king rather than to God who they formally believed in. Um, so they didn't really expect the these guys, Daniel and his friends, to put up a lot of like, no, I don't want to. They kind of expected them to um, become like them, to start eating like them, to start worshiping their gods like them, to start doing what they were doing. Um, but Daniel and his friends did not do that. And I think that's a really big deal. Um, so going through the notes in my Bible, there were multiple views and opinions as to why they chose not to eat the Babylonians' food, not to assimilate to their culture. Um, one of the reasons is that they didn't want to eat anything that's unclean. And that's kind of an Old Testament um, term for food that was unclean but before the eyes of God. And that's in Jewish culture. Um, and another reason that people have speculated why they didn't want to eat their food is because they were worried that Nebuchadnezzar, the food coming off of Nebuchadnezzar's table and the wine may have been offered to their idols before they ate it. So they didn't want to eat and drink food and wine um, that had been offered to idols that they don't believe in and they don't worship. Um, and the most widely accepted reason that I found um, that they made this decision is because they didn't want to um, give up their Jewish identity. They didn't want to give up their God-fearing um, identity as a Jewish person, as a person of God. Um, and they wanted to do whatever they needed to do to um, protect themselves from being tempted by the Babylonian culture. Um, and they wanted to protect their ancestry and their identity as a follower of God um, and they would not abandon their loyalty and love for God just because they were exiled just because now they're servants um, and I think that's kind of the main lesson that stood out to me as I was reading this and I felt like God really taught me is that even though Daniel and his friends were 
plundered and they were exiled from their home only to serve those who plundered and exiled them. So they went from living and being fine and being happy in their palace to then being exiled and serving the people who did it to them. Um, and what stood out to me is that even though that's where they were at, they did not question their loyalty to the Lord. And um, in the introduction part of my Bible, it says, um, the people of Judah could have interpreted their exile to Babylon as the end of their special relationship with God. But not only does the book of Daniel show them that it is possible to be faithful to God, even away from the promised land, it also shows them that God has not abandoned his plan for the world. So they didn't blame God for their circumstances, right? Even though their life turned upside down and their life didn't go as they wanted it to go or as they had planned, they didn't blame God and they didn't go down that rabbit hole um, of claiming that God had forgotten them, God had forsaken them, um, God doesn't care about them anymore, God can't protect them, right? And I think that often is where we land when things in our life change, when they go unexpectedly. Um, and they chose, Daniel and his friends chose to not project their circumstances, what happened to them, on the character of God because they knew the character of God. And I think um, I've had many moments in my life where things have happened, where I've lost close family members super suddenly. Relationships have failed. Um, people have changed and I've um, been really confused by it. Um, and I immediately, immediately start to question, does God love me? Should I be loyal to God if God doesn't give me what I want? If um, hold on one second. Um, if God doesn't give me what I want, if the circumstances change in a way that I don't think they should have changed. Um, and I'll give you a really um, straight up and kind of personal example. About three weeks ago now, um, my boyfriend of almost six months broke up with me out of nowhere. I didn't see it coming. Um, it was just terrible. Um, we had talked about we had gone and looked at houses. We had like um, talked about marriage. We talked about all of our lives together. We have, you know, it was it was really serious. And I, you know, thought he was gonna be my husband, right? And then he broke up broke up with me out of nowhere. And immediately I start to go down the rabbit hole of thoughts of maybe God doesn't love me if He doesn't want me to find someone to love. Maybe living a life for God's purpose is gonna suck and kind of be disappointing. Maybe God's not protecting me from the pains of this world. And that track of mind, in my mind, is where Daniel should have gone in this story. You know, one day he's chilling in the palace and he's totally fine. And then the next day he's a servant in the palace, in a different palace, um, serving the people who took everything away from him. And if I were in his position, I would have questioned God's protection. I would have questioned his goodness. I would have um, gone down that rabbit hole because that's what we do when we don't think we get what we should get, right? Um, and a few days after the breakup, like a few days after being just in that space where I'm just doubting and I'm mad and I don't understand, and I'm just like, who is God then? Like, if he can let this happen to me, then who's God and blah, blah, and start doubting left and right God's character. A few days after the relationship ended, I just made the decision that my loyalty to the Lord would stand. And it sounds dumb, and it sounds like it's not that simple, but I think it really is more simple than we think that I, I made the decision that I would not project what I wanted to happen on God's plans. It's God. He has a better plan for me than I have a plan for myself, right? Even though I thought I was going to marry him, God has someone better, right? And I think so often we can just go down the rabbit hole of thinking, well, he didn't give me what I wanted, so why should I be loyal to him? Why should I stand with him? Why should I believe what he says about himself? And 
I just think it's just, it's just not true. And it, it sucks to be in that spot. Like the three days where I was debating whether or not I was going to like be loyal to God, I was like so sad and I was mad and it was just really exhausting to be in that space. And I think um, it takes a long time and it takes a daily choice to get to that point, right? I think so often we think, okay, I'm going to make the choice to follow God and then we don't really make that choice again. That's what I think sometimes we envision it like. Like, I made this choice to follow Jesus. That's good, right? Now I'm good. But no, it. Daniel shows us, and I think God shows us in this story that it is a daily choice to follow God. It is a daily choice to surrender our plans, to surrender our circumstances, to surrender our hearts to the plan of God, to what he wants for our life. And that's, I think, why Daniel's faith stood and that's why his loyalty to the Lord stood, because his faith didn't rely on getting the blessings and rewards that he thought he deserved for being loyal to God, right? And I think that's where we can sit too, is like, I've been loyal to God. I serve in church. I work at a church. So God should be loyal to me because I'm doing what he wants me to do. I'm living a holy life, blah, blah, blah. When like, no, that's a conditional love. I'm doing one thing in, in the expectation that God's going to give me something in return, and that's just not love, right? Unconditional love and unconditional faith is what it's all about, that we would love God, that we would be loyal to God regardless of the circumstances that we're in every day. Like, it is a every day, every moment shift of perspective of I'm going to make the choice not to go down that rabbit hole, and I'm going to make the choice to believe what this book says about God, that he is loyal, that he's loving, that he is good, and that his plans are better than mine, because they just are. Um, so um, in conclusion, I want you guys to just ask yourself, does your faith in the Lord and his goodness depend on the circumstances of your life? And if it does, if you've kind of come to this point where you're like, I don't feel like my faith always stands. I don't feel like my faith like is, is solid. I don't feel like I have that unconditional um, faith and love for God. Talk to him about it. This is not a shameful thing. I don't want you to feel bad about it because it's a human thing that we will all struggle with our entire life. Just talk to God about it. Ask him to help you understand. Ask him to enlarge your capacity to understand his goodness for you, understand um, his love for you, ask him to shower his love down on you and help you soak it in and ask God to help you store up that faith and that love so that when times come where life changes and you don't get what you think you should get, that you have that faith and love stored up to continue following God to continue being loyal to him and to continue believing that God is who he says he is. Um, and I just, I, I love you guys. And uh, I think this is a really good word. And the cool thing about scripture is you guys could read this chapter and get something totally different than me. And God could teach you something totally different. So get in this scripture, read the rest of the chapter because it's so, so, so good. And we're gonna continue reading it next week. Um, thank you for listening. I'm going to pray us out really quick and then we can go to small groups. Heavenly Father, we thank you for um, this story. We thank you for this book. God, it is a blessing and it is your God-breathed, alive word. And uh, it is so good and it teaches us and um, convicts us all at the same time. God, you are so good to us. Um, I ask that um, my words something would speak to someone and that your your spirit would be um, active and and softening hearts to accept the love that you have for them um god we love you and jesus we love you and we pray this in your name amen Hey guys, welcome to my quarantine vlog part six.
maybe we are not sure <laughs> losing track of the days you know my name is carol blom one make sure you subscribe below this week is gonna be really active and fun i'm really excited i gotta get my pal alan here and we're gonna do a little obstacle course to stay active got my sweat band on for all my sweats alan come on buddy let's do some working out stuff Okay, so no matter how much space you have, you can always, you know, improvise. So look here. This is a contraption I've made, a, a hurdle per se. You go like this. Woo! Alan, knees up. Let's go, Alan. Good job, buddy. Sweet. Next one, it's kind of like a pickup sticks kind of game, but also yard work too. Oh, but you don't want to hurt your hands. Gotta put gloves on, you know. Gotta protect those paws. Alan forgot his gloves, obviously. <laughs> Pick up four sticks. <laughs> Chuck them in with your the Did it. That has so many purposes. <laughs> Next one. For your friends, you can write them a note. But you gotta go fast, because I wanna beat Alan. Hey, friend. I love you. And then, you go over. Tap the pumpkin. Guess who won? It was me. My sweatband is full of sweat now. Alan did okay. I'll see you next week. Hey, we love all of you so much. Man, I join with the Apostle Paul in most of his epistles when he prays that he longs to be with his church again. He longs to be with his people again. And I long to be with all of you again also. Uh, it's small groups time now, so why don't you head over to your small groups? You can stay tuned for that email address I was just talking about if you want to send me some feedback or if you need a small group. But let me tell you, what a night. What a night. The story of Daniel. I can't wait to dig deeper in it. So I love all of you. Have a good one. Yeah, I got ends in my pants, so I dance like I'm crazy. Right hit the left, now go crazy. Won't hop too hard, make it wavy. Jesus, my Lord, yeah, he saved me. Uh, slide it, bust down, riot. Fold my hands together, I pray when I'm quiet. Two beats to my enemies, you know they stay silent. Throw it, catch it. Uh, I thought I'd catch it. Lil' mom, put me to the block, what's happening? Not